Welcome back to Garage Time. I have been on a quest to get my car in drivable condition, and today is no different. I've been doing almost daily videos for the last two weeks, working through a list, and today the item is the rear suspension. I'm gonna be installing these torsion bars. Garage Time. Now, if you've been watching a while, you'll know that I did some extensive modifications to my chassis to allow it to use coilovers. And I'm absolutely gonna use coilovers in the future, but I don't have the parts yet. So while I wanna get this car on the road, I'm gonna use the parts that I do have, which are the stock 23 millimeter uh, torsion bars in the rear and just traditional Bilstein uh, shocks in the back. That'll allow me to drive the car and then certainly upgrade at a later date. The ends here are marked right and left. So that makes it easy to get them installed. And the car is up on its jack stand. That's where the torsion bar goes, right there where there's the hole in the body and that yellow spring plate bracket. Okay, up to now in doing all the work on this car, I've just been using this long solid shock. It's basically a piece of angle iron drilled there. So that's what's holding the suspension in place. The torsion bars aren't even in right now. So you do have to be careful if you're working on yours if it's under tension. I know these came out of my car, it's a 911, but the 912 also uses 23 millimeter torsion bars, which given the difference in weight of the engines, I was kind of surprised. So this will be uh, stiffer than it would have been on a stock 911 because there's not as much weight in the back. While the paint's drying on the car, I touched up a few areas right near where this attaches to the car. It was hidden behind there. And I'm gonna make a small change to the spring plate to make camber adjustments easier. The factory has a, like an eccentric bolt that's like a quarter turn and you try to adjust the, the camber and it's a little hard to keep track of and it's a little hard to reach back there and do it. So what I'm gonna do is add a block that goes underneath here and it will have a grub screw or a set screw and a lock nut to drive the camber adjustment up and down. The saw is so good, these blocks don't even get hot. moving the drill press by hand because I'm threading this with just hand pressure just to get the tap started and then I can do the rest with a wrench. Now that it's straight, I can get a little more leverage here with it. It's a pretty deep hole, so you definitely want to start straight. Just 
Got to go a little wider. Okay, the way this works is this is going to get welded onto the spring plate and then this bolt here, which will probably be a grub screw in the future with a lock nut, is going to push up against the aluminum trailing arm. You kind of see a little outline of it right here. So as you thread this in and out, it's going to be pushing up and down on the trailing arm. That's what changes the camber. And then on this side, I wrap the welds around, but I don't need to go right there behind the threads. I'm just gonna leave that alone. This, this nut here was only for holding the, the thing flat during welding, so I'm taking this off. I was using this nut to gauge the distance. I ground one side of it flat, so it kept the right orientation of the uh, screw relative to the plate. It's nice and parallel now. Okay, what, what I did to this, I couldn't find a grub screw the right length, so I just ground the head off a little bit. It's, you can still see where the head was, but this is where the jam nut goes on the bottom side. So once you have a position, you can lock it in. I'll thread this back on. This is the right side. If you ever wonder what this hole in the car is for, this is what it's for. Nope, oh, I just got grease on that thing. And according to the Elephant Racing uh, calculator, I should have an angle of 31.5. And this is nowhere close to that, so we need to adjust it down. That's 33.5. So let's try, uh, yeah, one spline is probably going to be too much. Let's try. Yeah, that's 25.5. So we need to um, take the inner spline and rotate it, um, I think, counterclockwise one, and then the outer one clockwise one. Thirty one point nine five. So that's within half a degree. I'm going to go with that for now. So I'll do my best to explain how this new block and this threaded rod work. This is from the inside of the trailing arm. This banana arm is aluminum. So what happens with this adjustment block is it pushes up against the aluminum trailing arm and changes its position relative to the spring plate. So the procedure would be to loosen these three bolts. That's a big M12 bolt there. There's one there and then one up above the banana arm. And those are situated kind of in a triangular pattern. So when those are loose, you can force the arm up or down, depending on how the adjustment bolt here is set. So that changes the camber. This is where the eccentric bolt normally goes, and it does the same thing. It just changes the position of the arm relative to the spring plate. This bolt right here, or all three of these bolts, will actually change the toe too. So you can see how this hole is sneaking a little bit closer to this side of the oval. Well, you can change the toe by loosening these three and then pulling the banana arm back a little bit and that's gonna get that's gonna change its position of toe and camber depending on how the height is now this should make it a little easier to keep those two adjustments independent because it'll slide relative to this bolt on this one so I should be able to keep the camber constant change the toe in if I want to change the 
the uh, the camber. I can probably leave one of these bolts tight back here and then just dial it up a little bit or dial it down. And then once it's in position, lock it and then lock those three bolts down. And that's really what maintains the alignment, maintains the integrity of the suspension. This bolt won't take any force once these three are loaded up and tightened up because this is just for adjustment purposes and these three are what lock it all together. And it's way too high. It's not really fair to you know, assess the height until both sides are done. This is the side that has no spring, has just a solid shock on it. And then over here, this is the side that was just set up and it's pretty high. I used 2,000 pounds on the, on the calculator, 2,000 pounds, Euro height, and that's the number it gave me with 23 millimeter torsion bars. So it'll probably settle down a little bit more if I do the other side, but I'm gonna have to take it all apart again, I'm sure, and readjust to a smaller angle. I had 31.95. Okay, that camber device I put in has nothing to do with the ride height. That's not what's holding this up. I need to slot the other side, weld the other side, and get that in and the other torsion bar in, and then I can reassess the ride height and try to make a calculated adjustment. Uh, I'm gonna do that probably at another time. So thank you again for watching. I probably won't be as active next week. I have some day job stuff that I've been putting off and next week I need to resume. So I've made a lot of progress on the list, you guys, but uh, still a lot to go. Yeah, that was the rear coilover or torsion bars torsion bars in this case. And a little bit on alignment, you know, those devices I put in are going to improve the camber adjustability, but can't cross that off the list yet. Right now we stand with uh, 24 items left to go.